What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to create this retro text effect using layer styles and textures in Photoshop. We post new videos and resources every week, so make sure you hit subscribe and follow us on social media using the links in the description. Also visit newlayer.com and sign up for the email list to get special offers that only email subscribers can get. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is create our document. So I'm going to go up to File, New, and I'm going to set the width to 1920 and the height to 1080 and hit Create. Next, I'm going to come down and create a new solid color fill layer, and I'm going to set that to a light tan with the hex code F0E8C8 and hit OK. Now I'll create a color palette that we're going to use for our text effect and also for a border of our image. Since our document is 1920 pixels wide, I'm going to make five vertical stripes. Each stripe will be 384 pixels wide, which is one fifth of our total document width. So I'm going to click the rectangle tool and click on my canvas, and I'm going to set the width to 384 pixels and the height to 1080 and hit OK. Now I'll select the move tool and line this up right on the left side. I'm going to come over to my layers panel and double click the rectangle thumbnail. And I'm going to set the color for this stripe to 482C21 and hit OK. Then I'll right click and duplicate that layer and drag it over until it snaps into place. And I'm going to set this color to A73E2B. I'll duplicate that one again and drag it into place. And this color will be D07E0E. I'll duplicate that one more time and drag it into place. And this color is going to be E9DEB0. And lastly, I'm going to duplicate that one more time, drag it into place, and double click the thumbnail and set that color to 2F615E. Now I'll hold Shift and click the bottom rectangle layer. So I select all of our rectangles and I'll click the new layer group icon and I'm going to set this to the name border. Now I'm going to hold control and click the new layer mask icon and by holding control it's actually going to create a vector mask instead of a regular layer mask. Then I'll come over to my rectangle tool and click on the canvas and I want this to be the full size of the canvas so I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080 and then I'll drag that into the center. Now I'll select the Direct Selection tool and make sure I have that vector shape selected and press Ctrl X to cut it. Then I'll click my vector mask and paste it by pressing Ctrl V. Now it's not doing anything yet because the vector mask is the same size of the entire canvas. So I'm going to press Ctrl T to enter free transform mode and uncheck the maintain aspect ratio button and I'm going to set the width to 1890 and the height to 1050. So there's 15 pixels of padding all the way around and hit enter. Now I'm going to come up here and set the boolean mode to subtract front shape. Now that vector mask is hiding everything that's in the center and just showing those stripes around the border of our image. Now we'll add some text. So I'm going to choose our text tool and click on the canvas and I'm going to type the word nostalgia. So I'll make this a little bigger so it's easier to see and drag it to the center. Now I'm going to press Ctrl T to enter free transform mode and I'm going to rotate our text by negative 10 degrees and hit enter. The font I'm using is called Thirsty Script but you can really use any font that you want. I'm going to come over to the layers panel and double click that text layer and that will open the layer style dialog. So we're going to add a whole bunch of drop shadows that stack one on top of the other to create our effect. So I'm going to turn on the first drop shadow and select that and then I'm going to click the color and I'm going to sample the color from our background border and hit OK. I'm going to set the angle to 120 degrees and make sure use global light is checked. That way all of our drop shadow effects will use the same angle. Next I'll set the distance to 4, make sure the spread is set to 100% and change the size to 2 pixels. So if I turn the preview on and off, you can see a subtle drop shadow effect on our text. Next, I'll turn on the next drop shadow layer and make sure that this color is set to the burnt red color of our background. 
And this time we're going to set the distance to 15 and the size to 20. The third drop shadow layer is going to be using this orange color. So again, click to change the color and select the orange color in our background. And on this one, I'm going to set the distance to 37 and the size to 20. For our fourth drop shadow, I'm going to use the brown color from our background. And I'm going to set the distance to 59 and the size to 20. Lastly, I'm going to make our final drop shadow this dark teal color. And I'm going to set the distance to 81 pixels and set the size to 20. Once you've done all that, hit OK. So that's looking pretty good, but now we want to add some texture. I'm going to come and open up my files for this project. If you're a member of New Layer, you can download project files for all of our videos. Becoming a member helps us put out new tutorials every week, plus you get the bonus of project files and other premium downloads at newlayer.com. So if I open up my textures folder, I have a black and white texture that we're going to use to add to this image. So I'm going to click and drag it in and hit enter to place it. And I'm going to drag it just below the text. Next, I'll press Ctrl A to select that layer and Ctrl C to copy it. And then I'm going to select my text layer and click Create New Mask. If I hold Alt and click the layer mask, it'll open that in Photoshop. And then I'll press Ctrl V to paste that texture. Now I'll press Alt and click that again to get out of there. You can see the layer mask isn't doing anything, so I'm going to double click to open the layer style dialog again. And I'm going to make sure that I check layer mask hides effects. And then I'll hit OK. Now you can see that the layer mask is showing some parts of the text and hiding the rest based on the black and white values in the image. Now I'll come down to my texture and change the blend mode to linear burn and set the fill to 12%. Since this effect is just using layer styles, you can select your text and resize it and move it around and even change it and all the effects will still apply. That's it for today guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Let me know what you want to learn next in the comments because we create new content based directly on your feedback. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.